Hey there, Flock. I'm Mike from Epic Duck Studios, and welcome to Just Paint the Base. Today on this flat base, I'm going to paint a comic-style beach theme. I'm going to start by just laying down a base coat of Citadel Zamizi Desert. Now, this is a layer paint, so it's not too opaque, so it's going to probably take two or three coats to get a good coverage over the black primer. And this is coat two, and you can see we're starting to get a pretty opaque layer now. We're still going to want to go a little bit further than this because we don't want these black streaks showing through, but the color is much more developed even after the second coat. All right, so there's our second coat dry, so we're going to go ahead and just get one more on here. And we might actually need a fourth. We'll see. You can't rush a good base coat. Now I'm just going to make all the brush strokes go the same direction. And yeah, I think we'll come in for one fourth coat after this. Just make sure we get those last little bits showing through. All right, that third coat's fully dry. I'm gonna go ahead and just get one more down here. And this is just to make sure there's no little black specks showing through. After this, it's okay if, you know, it's not a perfect base coat because we're gonna be adding a lot of texture and other detail on top of this, but I don't want big black streaks showing through this. Little tiny bits here and there will go ignored once the whole base is done. There we go, that's a pretty consistent base coat. Right, so now I want to create the illusion of ripples of sand on the beach, and I'm going to be doing that with some P3 Moro White first off, and I'll be mixing shades between the Moro White and the Zamisi Desert to just get some interim colors. And what I really recommend here is you just look up pictures of beaches, literally beach sand. You know, search Google Images or wherever you like to get your photos from and just get an actual photo of what a real beach looks like. What you'll notice is they have sort of kind of just almost straight lines in the sand, but then they occasionally will split and they'll follow two parallel paths. So the idea here is we're sort of creating the high points in the sand. And they actually don't look too dissimilar from, you know, ripples in the water. Now we just want to uh, clean those lines up a little bit, make them a little straighter and a little cleaner. A little less variation in the color. So each of these is basically the peak of a small, you know, a very small hill, right? You sort of imagine the sand kind of, you know, divoting between these. And of course, your sand doesn't have to be Zamisi Desert. You know, if you want to do a nice white sand beach, you would maybe use like, you know, an ivory or a screaming skull or something like that. This is going to be a little bit different than most of my comic style work because it's not really going to use a lot in the way of black lining. So now what I want to do is take a little bit of the white on the palette and roughly 50-50 that with Zamisi Desert. And what I want to do is I want to pick a direction that's going to be the facing of the base. So, because we want to have basically a side with a highlight and a side with a shadow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assume the light's coming more or less straight in this way. So our highlight will be, because remember these are sort of dips in the sand. So looking at this one, for example, this will be our dark side over here and back right along the white line is gonna be our highlight. So this color now is halfway between basically our shadow color, the Zamisi Desert and our highlight. So I'm gonna actually paint this into the middle of each of these sort of sandbars we've created. And what's going to happen is this side's going to stay the color it is, a little bit darker. And then this side here we're going to actually make even lighter still. Now this one we don't really see the next sandbar so we just have to kind of fake it a bit. Now it's actually possible that the white is too light. We will uh, discover that momentarily I guess. 
I'll be honest, I'm kind of making this one up as I go. So now I want to make just another Intim color, and this will be mostly white with just a touch of the Zemisi Desert in it. And this is going to, with this being our direction that the light's kind of hitting, this is going to come in this area here, between the white line and our mid-tone. So we actually maybe could use a color between those two and that's okay we can kind of work back and forth until we're happy with it you know your mix may be a little bit on the darker side and you don't need that extra step but hopefully you can see now that we're getting kind of the illusion of some ripples of sand with a little bit of depth to them. So I'm going to go the other way here. I'm going to take just a little bit of the Zemisi Desert and just bring a drop of white into it and get a tone kind of in the opposite direction. Just a lighter version of Zemisi Desert. And I'm going to bring a lot of water into it. And what I just want to do is just quickly... Just go over just this sort of boundary line between those two colors. Just smoothen our blends out a little bit. Everything's looking just a little bit rough right now. And that's okay. I mean, we're still in the very early stages of this base, but smoother is better. So just take in a little bit of Zemisi Desert again into a lot of white. So I'm just really, really close to white now. I'm just blending this line slightly. Because I don't want just a stark, you know, thick white line. I want it to look more like an actual edge. So we just blend it a little bit. And we're getting a pretty convincing representation of sand now. And now that we're doing these thinner coats with some water in them, they, uh, they blend pretty nicely. So I can use that to clean up almost any of these blends at this point. It's uh, it's translucent enough. Now I'm actually really hesitant to call this one comic style. It's, you know, it's clearly painted on a flat base, and that works great for comic style miniatures because it means you don't have 3D objects like flock and gravel that you have to work around. But it's not itself particularly comic style. At least not yet. What we can do is bring in some details like seashells or maybe even a little crab or something to make it look a little more comic-y. But I'm certainly happy with that as just a, you know, a nice sandy, you know, beach kind of look. So what we can do here, if we want to make it just a little bit different, a little more distinct, we can pick some different colors and just make seashells or whatever. Or we can have some fun with it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint a tiny little crab on the base. So I'm going to grab just a little bit of Mephiston Red. And this is going to be really, really easy. I'm just going to drop a little, basically a little circle. We don't need to be big. We don't need to be detailed. He just needs to be a little embellishment, you know? Just a little something on the base. A couple little crabby legs. Now keep in mind, we're probably going to want to actually black line those, so they'd probably be better off just as individual black lines and not as the little limbs I just painted. Let's give them some claws. And like I said, we don't need a lot of detail to this guy. Let's give him one really big claw, though. And you kind of almost picture the miniature on this base just trying to like walk by and this little dude just maybe being a little bit angry that we're passing by him defending his little spot in the sand. I'm just going to take some of the white that's already on the palette, mix it in, 
And we can just, you know, just add a little, just a little glare to his shell, maybe a little bit to his claws. Doesn't take much. You know, we're not looking to create a full-blown character here. We just want something to kind of add a little detail to the base. So I'm going to come in with some Higgins Black Magic, which is our black drawing ink we use for almost all of our comic style work here. And then we're going to use our Game Envy Triple Zero Foil. It's a nice, small, thin, tapered brush. And I specifically picked these out for Game Envy because I use these so much in my comic style work. I felt really, really good recommending that Kit carry these. So what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to go around the crab's main body here. Oop, that is actually way too much black ink. It just sort of flowed right off the brush, and that's all right. Actually, maybe it's fine. So those little legs I drew before, let's just turn those into little individual black lines. They're small enough we don't really need to try and like outline them and put a little bit of red in the middle. Like that, that's enough detail. I'm just going to take a little bit of the Zamizi Desert and mix just a drop of black ink into it. Get a nice dark sand color. I'm just going to drop a little bit of that underneath the crab here. Oh, that's too dark. Let's bring a little more Zamizi Desert into it. What I want to do is just sort of have, you know, the idea of like a little bit of a shadow under them. Yeah, that's all we need. Just a little, a little hint that he's... You know, maybe not as flat as he may look. I actually really like that. Now, the last thing we're going to do here is just take our black ink and just touch up the sides of the base because we don't want, you know, where we sort of vigorously brushed the uh, the base coats and stuff around. We don't need that hanging out the sides. Alright, there's our more or less comic style sandy beach base. Our fun little crab buddy on it. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that one, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I post new content in the future. If you want to take your support even further, you can do so at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps me keep the lights on and the paint flowing, puts new models on the table so I can make interesting videos, and most importantly, keeps a roof over my family's head and food on the table. Honestly, Patreon is what makes doing this every single day possible. You can also catch me six times a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios. I'd really love it if you came by to watch my show sometime and clicked follow. A big thank you to everyone who has supported my stuff, both past and present, over the years. It's been a wild ride, and I couldn't do this without the fans and all of the wonderful flockers out there. The hobby community is just an amazing group of people, and you make this worth doing. So let's keep doing this together for years to come. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.